It don't matter how long you in the truth. You could be standing in the truth for seven, eight, ten years. It says, Wherefore let him that think if he standeth, take heed, be see fall. At any time you could fall. So we can't get in that prideful spirit. Think, oh, I've been here seven years. I know this, I know the princess, and all that. Right? You could fall at any time. Right? Read. They have no temptation taken you, uh -huh. but such as is common to man. So the temptation that the adversary comes with is what's common to man. So he don't come with anything different. Remember, they're watching you from the outside. Right? They know your weaknesses. So he know what to use to get you to fall. Right? He wants a soldier for himself. He want to take the most high soldiers for himself. He want to see you fall. He want to see you judge like he's judged with, along with the angels. Right? The disobedient angels. Right? So he's going to bring that temptation that's common to man. Right? So we have to fight this spiritual battle. Right? This is the spiritual battle that we're in. This is who we're battling against. It's not with flesh and blood. Right? Read. But a higher is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? Uh -huh. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Right. So you won't be tempted above your strength. You won't be tempted above what you can't bear. Right? He gives you what you're able to bear and also make a way to escape. This is how faithful the Mosa is. Right? Read. That ye may be able to bear it. Come on. Therefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as a, as to wise men. Come on. Judge ye what I say. Uh -huh. The cup of blessing which we bless, it is not the communion of the blood of Christ. You see that? Is it not the communion? Is, the is it not? Read it properly. Verse 15. Verse 15. Verse 15. Come on. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which be blessed, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Right. So that cup of wine which we drink, right, is the communion of the blood of Christ. That represents the Messiah's blood that is shed for many. Right? That covers our sins. Read. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So the bread that we want to eat also is the communion of the body of Christ. So you can't play with his blood and his body. So Christ warned of the leaving of the Pharisees. He said beware of the leaving of the Pharisees. He's speaking to his disciples. So there's nothing wrong with warning people concerning, right? Something that's against them, something that's against Christ, something that's against his path. Right? So that's what a true watchman and shepherd must do. Warn the people. So this is what Christ is doing. Read. Which is hypocrisy. Uh-huh. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Uh-huh. Neither hid that shall not be known. So everything will be revealed on the day of judgment. So we can't right we can't walk this walk in hypocrisy you can't have one foot in and one foot out you can't be hiding doing stuff in the dark and then when you come on Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat you can't fake it whatever is hidden will be revealed where you think it's hidden right come on Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Uh -huh. And that which ye have spoken in the air in closet shall be proclaimed upon the house top. Right. So let's go on to the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 5. So this is the same quote that we just read in Luke 12. Right. But we're going to see what Christ now is talking about concerning the leaven of the Pharisees. Right. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 16 and we're going to read verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Come on. 
Then Yeshaya said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees uh -huh. and of the Sadducees. Uh -huh. And they reason amongst themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? So they didn't understand what he meant when he said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Right? So they was like, Is it because we have taken no bread? Read. Which when Yeshaya perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, uh -huh. why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Uh -huh. Do ye not understand? Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Uh -huh. How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread? So Christ was like, I don't speak to you concerning bread. Right? When they say beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Read. That ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees uh -huh. and of the Sadducees. Uh -huh. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread uh -huh. but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So you see that? He was speaking of doctrine. So when the elders warned about different doctrines, right? They're warning you so that you don't go down a different path. Right? They know there's a lot of false doctrines out here. And a lot of people don't have that level of discernment to know what is right from wrong because they, they don't study, right? So this is why they put out that warning so that you don't become, right? One of the people who fall into a stumbling block that's online and then you are of the faith. So this is why a warning is put out. But it's up to people to take heed to those warnings. Even Christ, as we read here, warned his disciples to beware of the Pharisees' doctrine. Right? So don't take an offense when somebody is warning you, oh, you be careful online what you see online. There's a lot of confusion out there. Right? So let's go to John chapter 14, verse 6. And I'm going to read the commentary real quick. Christ, who was represented throughout our history also was represented as the bread of life which was without hypocrisy and the only way that our people would be able to have an acceptable sacrifice to save us from sin our leaders even today have led our people in paths of hypocrisy Christ is the only acceptable sacrifice so do you accept this sacrifice right or do you choose the sacrifices on the Moses? For this is the only way back to the Father. Choose this, the ultimate and true sacrifice. Which is the blood and body of Christ. Right? So let's go to John chapter 14 verse 6. The book of St. John chapter 14 and 6. Come on. Yeshaya said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. See that? So the only way back to the Father is through the Messiah, Yeshua. Right? Read. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father uh -huh. also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. And have seen him. Now, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. So Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Through him we get life, right? His path is the only way to the Father, right? And he is the truth. So let's get Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. Book of Galatians chapter 5 and 7. Uh -huh. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Mm -hmm. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Mm -hmm. A little leaven leaven if the whole lump. So you have a little leaven. Leaven if the whole lump. Right? It leaven if the whole lump. Right? You see what? When you put in a little yeast or a little baking powder, what it does to the whole bread. 
They see me as sin. What it does to the whole body. It defiles the body. Right? So a little hypocrisy in following Christ can ruin the whole message. A little hypocrisy in following Christ can ruin the whole message. Leaven is also hypocrisy. Leaven is also sin. Leaven is also malice. Right? Various and strife. All that's leaven. So when, you, when it talks about removing the leaven from your houses, the most important thing first, we have to remove the leaven from your faith. Because there's leaven in your fingers. So what good is you removing the leaven out of your houses when you're full of leaven your whole self? Right? So it's all about the inner man. The leaven within. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4. We're going to soon finish up. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 4. In the name of our Lord Yeshua Christ, huh? when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Yeshua Christ, huh? to deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, uh -huh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord and Shia. Come on. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaven leaveneth the whole lamp. Right. So we must not glory in the flesh. That glory is not good. Right? And it says, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamp. Come on. Purge out therefore the old leaven. So we must purge that old leaven. We must purge that old man. We must purge our old ways. Read. That ye may be a new lump. So that we could become that new lump, which is acceptable to the most high in Christ. Read. As ye are unleavened. Uh -huh. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So you see that? Even Christ our Passover, the true Passover lamb. Right? Is sacrificed for us. Right? So this is Paul speaking. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Right? So this is what we are remembering today. What he did for us. Right? Remembering how it was foreshadowed from during the time of Moses. Why they had a brand new lamb before blemish. Right? And how that blood of that lamb that was put on the doorpost covered them when the death angel passed by. It's the same way now how the true blood of the true lamb, which is his child, covers us this time. Right? So it's deeper. Understand? That's the only way you understand the New Testament. When you understand the old. Right? So you have to start from the volume of the book to get the full understanding. Right? The volume of the book is written of Yeshua. So read verse 7 again. Purge out therefore the old leaven, uh -huh. that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So he is our sacrifice. Read. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hey, this is the New Testament. It say what? Therefore, let us keep the feast. So we must keep the feast of Passover. Even after Christ's death, they were still keeping Passover. So if there's anyone saying, oh, we don't have to keep the Passover, right? Hey, the scriptures say, we let us keep the feast. Read. Not with old leaven, uh -huh. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. So you see the different types of leaven, hypocrisy, malice, wickedness. Right? This is all leaven. So this is the leaven that we must purge out. So we must not be keeping the feast with this old leaven. See that? That's the leaven that Judah, Judas had. Right? Envy. Right? Jealousy. Covetousness. He wanted the money. He wanted everything. So we must not keep this feast with that type of spirit.